And those are some major challenges. But there are also other major challenges that go with STEM, uh, such as global warming, uh, such as which Julie will, tell, will talk about after me. Uh, there, there, there's things like global warming, diseases, viruses, challenges like that which face us. Um, and these are very difficult problems that, in principle, science has told us how to solve a lot of them, but they remain difficult. And so, when we're faced with all these problems, like people, <laughs> in our world, why would we not want uh, another world, an artificial world, a world made out of artificial atoms? But these are not the kind of artificial atoms that you would use in brewing your coffee or in baking your donut. No, these are the kind of artificial atoms you would use for solving problems. Impossible, intractable problems. And so I'm here to bring you a, a homegrown, uh, local flavor, a Yale brewed flavor of how to build artificial atoms to solve intractable problems. But before I can continue, just to demonstrate, maybe I can ask for a volunteer. Someone who's not afraid of getting sick. Uh, I see a guy in the in the back. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in the back, so come on up. <laughs> I take it he doesn't need an introduction. <laughs> So what was your name? Mike. 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 Thank you, Mike. Yep. Stand maybe over there. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Mike. Yeah. Wow, I love the energy. I want to hear it again. Say hello to Mike. <laughs> All right. And I already like Mike because everyone seems to know him and like him. He's quite a popular guy. <laughs> oh, he's an RA. He's an RA. All right. Well. <laughs> Mike is, Mike is healthy now, but imagine, imagine that all of a sudden Mike's bloodstream is struck, is struck down by this vile, vicious, voracious, venomous abomination, this vile virus, and he falls down to the ground, ill, and no one is coming to his help. What can we do? No, Mike, how can we help you? What is the, what can we do? We need a, we need a, we need something that can save him. What can we do? We need a chemically stable compound which will save Mike. An artificial atom, I love it already. This is a virus, a virus that has never been seen by people before. And it's come out, it's come out into Mike's bloodstream. And we have no idea what to do. We know how to solve the problem in principle. We know the laws of nature. Technically we can compute the chemically stable compound that will obliterate this abomination. But the problem is so hard. That, not, that it would take longer than the edge of the universe to compute. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> you can be healthy again. <laughs> and so it is impossible problems like this that require an artificial world which can solve things that would take longer than the edge of the universe, problems such as that. Uh, so might I ask, why is that problem so difficult? What makes it difficult? I would say that it is the law our world, set up by the fundamental building blocks, the atoms, which constrain us, which makes some problems difficult and some problems easy. But imagine we can take those laws and scrap them, I and mean, we can build our own laws, we can design our own world, a world from artificial atoms with our laws, in which we can make problems which are difficult here, easy there. So we can take difficult problems and we can step into this other world. We can solve them and bring back the happy answers. <laughs> and then we can take those answers back. <laughs> and what might that world be? I believe, I believe it is the world of quantum mechanics. Quantum world. It is the world traditionally accessed by atoms. The problem is there are only 116 atoms there are no more. They come with fixed quantum electrical properties and you just can't make any other ones. So if we want to build an artificial world, we need artificial atoms that we can engineer. So what do you do? Well, you have a big question. You go and ask a very smart man, last year's Nobel laureate, David J. Wineland. So I had the chance to go and take this highly embarrassing photo, which, because he doesn't look happy at all to see me. <laughs> He's like, who are you? Get out. But. He had an answer. 
A C, a C of electrons. Now what might that mean? You see, atoms are quantum, but so are electrons. So screw atoms, throw them out the window. Electrons. electrons is all you need to build your artificial world. But it's not so easy. There's a problem. And the problem is that, atom, that electrons are so small. If you've ever looked for an atom, you know it's small. Look for an electron. It's so instead of using one, we use a billion, a billion electrons, a billion quantum electrons. However, electrons like fish or even people get agitated when it's hot. At room temperature, there all the quantum fish electrons are agitated. They're running around and bumping into each other, and they're overall incoherent. And so our electrons represent one large, classical, incoherent macroscopic object. But now imagine that we can make these quantum fish electrons swim together in unison, happy. If they can do that, then since all the little individual fishes are quantum, then the entire school of quantum fish is quantum. But if there is one in a billion that swims in the wrong direction, then, he, then that little quantum fish will destroy the quantumness of the entire school of fish. It will be a green lurking monster that will eat that coherence and suck it away. And you're left with a classical object. And so how do we trick them into loving each other? Because electrons, they hate each other. They repel like crazy. You do a trick you do with penguins. You freeze them. You take them to negative 273.15 Celsius and you better believe that, just like penguins, they will be, love each other. They will come together, hug, and move collectively because it is energetically favorable and cold. <laughs> and so, when we, uh, when we cool, uh, so to, just to recap real quick, we can build an artificial world from the world of quantum mechanics to harness its powerful and bizarre laws, its nature. But we can't use necessarily atoms, we have to use instead our quantum fish electrons. But to make them quantum, we really have to take them, take a billion of them and make them very, very, very cold. And so what might a home for a fish look like? Because like all fish, our quantum fish electrons require a home, a place to call their own. Well, you can imagine that you take a little wafer and you slap some atoms on it because atoms are what, again, trap electrons. And you arrange them in some pattern. And in fact, if, uh, if we go in and zoom into this, picture our little quantum fish aquarium, if you will, then you will see that there are only two types of atoms. The silver ones, which might be aluminum, and these red colored ones, which would be oxygen. And that is all we use here at Yale. That is all the atoms to build our quantum fish aquarium, to trap our little quantum fishes. Uh, and a picture of a device might look something like this. A little blob, a ring, uh, but you have to realize there are a billion, a billion atoms. We trap a billion, a billion electrons inside. And these little, and this, this little blob here represents our quantum fish aquarium where our school of fish can live and be cooled. So they can swim around like that. Uh, and as we cool them to negative 273.15 Celsius, uh, they, just like penguins, they get, fro they get so cold that they come together, hug, and move coherently. And that way we can engineer the quantum electrical properties of this little circuit to mimic the actual behavior of real atoms. Except this time, they're not only 116. We've made the ones we want. And to build an artificial world from these little individual artificial atoms, all you have to do is make something like a circuit. You take one of those and you put it here. You take another one, you put it here, a third one here. Wire them up, boom, voila. You have a world where you could step into and hope to compute your problems, solve those kind of problems. But what else could we use this for? if we could build a quantum computer like that. Well, imagine there's a very evil man who's put some very bad and evil information on this computer. But he's hidden it. He's encrypted it. He's locked it up with a key. And that key, just like your credit card information going over the internet, is very, very long. Maybe 256 bits. So that kind of key has so many possibilities, so many keys to try that it would take longer than the age of the universe. But imagine that we can construct a world, an artificial world, where you can try all of the keys simultaneously at once. And that's what, we try, that's what we're building here. You can try all the keys 
uh, at once, so in less than a second you can get the right key, the right answer, and, and break into this computer. And so, just to sum it up, problems don't have to be impossible. Problems are only impossible if we constrain ourselves to our world, to our laws. But if we can engineer an artificial world from artificial atoms built up from billions of cold quantum fish electrons, then we can build an artificial world in which we can step and do the impossible computations. And with that, I'd like to thank you and ask for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So how does the artificial world would try to solve that the encrypted message which it which you can't which is hidden? Yeah, so the question is, how would the artificial world try to solve the um, um, cracking problem, if you will? Well, so there's, the thing is, we're all built up of these atoms, right? Uh, our constituent matter. But because there's so many of them, and there, because there's so many of them, you get groupthink. So the individual beauty, the individual behavior and character of those individual atoms, we never observe. So atoms, they can do funny things. They can be in, we've heard this, they can be in two places at the same time. They don't have identity. Um, they can be in a thing called superposition. They can be in multiple places. They can teleport, things like that. Things that we can never experience because we live in this other macroscopic world. But by tapping into those other laws, that other powerful side of nature that is there for us, that we can finally access only now into the 21st century and control, it is by using those kind of behaviors of nature at this fundamental level that we can hope to plug in, if you will, all the keys at once. Any more questions? Yes? <laughs> right, you have, to, you have to read out the answer, and that is actually a grand challenge, because this artificial world has talks in a different way, it has different laws, so we have to figure out how to exactly communicate with it. And that is, that is a very difficult thing that we're working out still. How do you measure, if you will? How do you measure the result? Yeah? So, it, so you're saying if we were to go to the world, I think it's building everything out of the next hundred of this? Yes, it would be, it would be um, it's an artificial world in the sense of, uh, of the quantum electrical properties of the atoms so we would it would be a, it would literally be like on a chip where you would have many of them pattern and then you would have little different channels and uh, connecting them and you would control them with different signals something like that good all right thank you